Right, so uh, I think all four of us are, are self-isolating, are, are isolating, aren't we? You yeah. are as well, Barbara? Yes, oh yes. In fact, because um, yeah. I still work only two days a week um, and I'm coming up to my retirement at the end of April um, and I had a call from work to say that I was in that group of people that, um, you know, doesn't have to go to work, but I don't know whether it means they're going to pay me or quite what, but there you go. <laughs> One of those things. They keep changing the thing every day now, so you never know what yeah. is coming on, do you? Mm. But um, uh, we, we, did you hear what we were saying about shops or didn't you come on after that? I came on after that. It's, yeah. it's the, well, the, we, considering I've, I've been on holiday and been at home, the number of calls yeah. and everything today I think people are just, you know, desperately trying to get in touch, sorting out different things. Um, I had a mm. query from one of our Bar FIPO members who had received um, an email from Jill Page, and he oh. thought it might have been a spoof, but um, it, it was to say, um, well, I, I knew because I'd heard from her too. Uh, the um, FIPO Church at Wind, Wyndham isn't yeah. going to hold its um, annual service. So, uh, I think, you know, I'd, I'd, in May, isn't it? May the 17th. May. Yeah, yeah, so it's quite So, um, I, I'd actually yeah. emailed her back to thank her for what they do there. I know that Peter Wiseman, you know, he's helping. August, August we should be okay. I'm hoping. By August, as long as things do work out okay, I, I yeah. think we should, we should be okay so. August. Yeah. But um, it's a bit frightening, but as I was saying, if you haven't... If you haven't heard, if you do order food uh, for deliveries like Jilly always does, yeah. uh, she had a hell of a job to get in the other day for a slot. But yeah. Sainsbury's phoned her up today and from Monday, she had given priority to the over 70s. Yes. And, and Morrison's phoned up, they're doing the same from Monday and so is Tesco. So yeah. from Monday, um, because the over 70s have got to isolate themselves, you will get priority deliveries. So that, that's yeah. a good thing. That is a yeah. good thing because, I mean, we can't go out. So you're relying on people, <laughs> you know. Uh, well, I don't silly. know. I mean, I, I went to Sainsbury's yesterday at 7 o'clock in the morning because they're on about yeah. doing special ones for, for us anyway. But I went at 7 o'clock in the morning. I was amazed because I thought they would have restocked, but the shelves were just empty and empty mm. of the the things that I would have never expected people would be stockpiling. But mm. there you go. I mean, I've I've got to go out because I'm in the middle of um, mom's um, selling mom's bungalow, um, so I've got to go to the solicitors in the morning, um, things like that, and um, get ready for another week or two, and then it will all be over. But, you know, there are certain things that you mm. can't do sitting at home. You've got to, go, you know, keep on and just no. be careful. Yeah. Oh, my husband did, did get maligned. He was out in the front garden. Um, well, at the garage, because um, <laughs> he was going mm. to go to Scotland with our son for a big 500 mile motorbike ride um, in May. Oh. Um, last night he cancelled it. But his um, compensation for that is that he's actually bought himself a brand new motorbike. Never bought a mo mo new motorbike before because he usually buys um, um, vintage and um, classic bikes. But he, he thought he'd have something reliable. And bless them, they did come and deliver it for him today. But he was out at the garage and a neighbour said, hey, you, you're supposed to be in, in the house. You're over 70. <laughs> You you shouldn't be out here contaminating everybody else. <laughs> contaminating. And I thought, thank you. You know, it's yeah. the other way round, actually. Yeah. Know. So yeah. there you go. Sorry. I, I, I know that now falls into place. Why you like that crash helmet? Because uh, I right. wondered why you yeah. like that crash helmet. Because you go around <laughs> on the back of a bike. I yeah, used to have well, a motorbike. I, I love my motorbike. Oh uh, yeah. Was, well, we've yeah. got a garage full of them and. And a side entry mm. full of them and a loft full of parts. Um, and I did actually, <laughs> when we went to um, Audrey's bike last week, I did actually go into a shop and ask um, whether they would decorate it like that that man's um, yeah, beautiful the, helmet. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I haven't that heard was, back that, from them. That was beautiful. Wasn't oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. 
Mm, I mean, I, I, yeah, going back to the 60s, our helmets were quite basic. <laughs> if you wore one, if you wore one. I can oh, remember yeah, sitting I, on, I, on I, uh, I the back of a bike one. with just a headscarf yeah. on, you know? No, I always yeah. wore one. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I can remember dropping... Well, I had, Gillian lived at Ormsby and we were caught on, so I used to drop her off at the bus station in, well, bus stop in Yarmouth. Yeah. And that was the Mods and Rockers. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it was in the 60s. I had leather jacket and everything. <laughs> and these scooters come along and there was a pedestrian crossing right next to where the bus was. And these scooters come along and a little old, a, well, a little old man is an old man with a guide dog decided to go across the road and the scooters yeah. hit him. His dog went uh... tearing off, you know, and I went tearing down to the phone box to call for the ambulance because he was in a bit of a state. And uh, people were looking at me because I had my leather jacket on, all my studs and everything, running along the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's in trouble type of thing. Anyway, no, we'll get back to we'll get back to what we're here for and that's um, <laughs> And that's uh, the the feeble thing. It's it's um it's still been busy. I have downloaded quite a few files this week this last week. I'm back again. I'm back again. Oh, you're back again. You got feedback. Oh. Got feedback. Yeah, you want to turn your sound down. <laughs> that's better. That's Haven't you got better. any headphones, Matt? <laughs> no. Matt, haven't you got any headphones? Oh. Anyway, um, he's muted yeah, out and going to my screen. Yeah, yeah. oh, muted he's muted there. himself. Yeah. I'm here now as well. Sorry, I was a bit late. Oh, well. <laughs> I had to reboot right, my laptop, um, it wasn't behaving. So, <laughs> right, I've downloaded quite a few files, about 10. While we were up North Norfolk, I didn't have much else to do, so I downloaded some files. And um, they're, they're, I'll, I'll send an email out tomorrow with them all on there, so you can have a look at them if you want. Um, there, there's a mixture. Anyway, uh, yeah, last, uh, what did I do with it? Last meeting, we forgot, or I forgot, The Philippines, on that last meeting, February, uh, the Philippines were liberated by the Americans, February 1945. Yeah? Tim? Mm. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. don't know much about so, the Philippines. So, no, so they <clears> liberated <throat> the Philippines. We forgot about that uh, in February. Um, I have got a, quite a list there, but that's, I'll, I'll read that later. Uh, the black one today was, uh, I always get back to this and I don't like it, Borneo, Sandakan. Oh, mm -hmm. um, the first marches, I'll just quickly go over it. The first marches from Sandakan were February 45. So the Allies were bombarding the coast of, of Borneo, and the Japanese decided they'd move the POWs from Sandakan. So they marched them on the first march to Ranu. Um, 470 POWs departed Sandakan, 370 Australians, 100 British. Early April, 350 reached Ranu, so 120 had died on the journey. Uh, by April the 27th, there was only 60 left, and by early June, 20 POWs. And when the second march of 500 POWs who left Sandakan in May arrived at Ranu, there were only 10 POWs from the March first first march left. By July the 28th. Uh, well, July the 28th, I can't pronounce his name, but one POW did escape, okay? So he did make it, he did escape. The third march, 35 POWs 
all died on the track. You don't even know if they went on the track to Renu. That is said that they were killed in the jungle. They weren't even bothered to get to Renu. August the August 45, when leaflets were being distributed, it is believed the Japanese killed the remaining POWs at, at uh, Renu. That's a horror. I, I I don't like it, but it's got to be said. And uh, as uh, Sandikan is really, when you have nightmares, that's one of the nightmares I used to have. Sandikan. That isn't a very nice one. Um, but I thought I'd go over that quickly. I know it isn't all March, but it did start February and go all the way through. So that's, and that's all 1945. So we now know that the Japanese did kill POWs after the emperor gave his speech on August the 15th, because they were definitely killed after, I suppose, to get rid of evidence. I, I suppose that's what it was. Um, that's not, God bless them. I mean, that's horrible. Um, I did find some other, but I'll let somebody else have a say. Let me get over sand again. Tim, you got anything to say? <laughs> I haven't really got nothing much, I don't think, no. No, uh, I know Barbara will have something. You've got to no, have something, Barbara. No, I, it's, it's only what I, I've done for our March newsletter, so it's all the marches. Um, so if you if you've mentioned in the Philippines, if we go back to... Um, I've lost it now, I was looking at it before. Um, Mindanao, yeah, the 11th of March, 1942, the Japanese land on Mindanao, the, the southernmost island in the Philippines. So that was what was happening there. I mean, they did like a blitzkrieg, didn't they? Very much German style where they just went from here to there in a short time, mm. even closer yeah. than we realised because of the, the time lapse. You know, these things were orchestrated with such yeah. precision. Um, I, the way they I, went. Think, I think, Barbara, what what they initially done was our biggest defence was Singapore. So yeah. they got rid of Singapore right at the beginning, and then they had a free line to go near enough all the way through, because yeah. I mean yeah. they'd got rid of most of it at Singapore. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I then, think what's come uh, across for me. It, Let's face is, it, is um, realising how, how much they, they did actually attack Australia because we always, well, yeah. I always sort of don't realise because we always think you go out to the Far East and you don't think how close Australia is to that. Um, oh, no, they were very close. Darwin yeah, got so, incredibly bombed. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I think yeah. uh, looking these up, you know, I've been um, quite amazed at how many, um, you know, raids they did do on Australia. Yeah, bomb um, raids, they did quite a few, didn't they? Yeah. Um, in 1943, on the 26th of March, um, there was the Battle of the Komondorsky Islands. In the Aleutian Islands, the United States forces intercepted the Japanese attempting to reinforce <coughs> their garrison at Kiska. I mean, these things probably don't mean a lot, and but it'd be nice to sort of look into them. Um, the, the, the poor leadership apparently led to a stalemate of sorts, um, and then the Japanese withdrew. Um, 1944, later on during March, uh, well, this is something we must must remember. Uh, March 22nd, 1944, the Japanese forces crossed the Indian border all along the Impal Front. Oh, yeah. Which is, you know, especially for you, Matt, all Game of that. Matt. Yeah, the yeah, Kohima right. battles. Um, the 24th of that year, your, uh, Ordwin Gate was killed in a plane crash. Um, and on the 28th, uh, Japanese troops were in uh, in retreat in Burma. So, uh, you know, there's quite a lot uh, in 1944. It, it was, was the uh, start of uh, yeah. its end. I mean, um, that, and that, yeah. that was March. the beginning of the end for the Japanese. I mean, they, they yeah. weren't expecting that. 
No. And they, but they hadn't got they hadn't got the back of all the supplies they needed, and we were lucky yeah. really because if they had a little bit more, uh, uh, if it had a, just like even if it'd been a couple of days more supplies and ammunition and stuff, I don't think we, we'd have survived that. So really, yeah, no. it was really t- touch and go. When you um, look back on history, though, Matt, when you look back on history, I mean the Russians. The, the Germans attacked the Russians. They didn't have the supply coming up, so they had to retreat. So that was the end of them attacking Russia. I mean, you look through history, and a lot of armies oh, yeah. go too quick. So oh. they, they advance well, too quickly, and their the, the supply tra- train for food and everything else is left behind. And so they well, have what, to retreat. That wasn't the case in the Japanese as such. They knew they hadn't got enough ammunition or supplies, uh, and they were hoping to replenish their supplies and ammunition by seizing Allied arms dumps as they get, go forward. But to uh, about this, we'd, we'd, they'd managed to intercept some Japanese messages, and they'd been ordered to seize ammunition dumps, seize food supplies, take food as you go, travel light and fast. Yeah. But because we had intercepted that message, the Allies, British, the Indians, the Canadians, the Chinese, and right, we basically, whenever we were in danger of being overrun or had to retreat, we destroyed everything. All our arms dumps, ammunition dumps, fuel dumps. If you couldn't move them, they just got destroyed. Make sure the Japanese couldn't get them. And so the Japanese actually came. As they hadn't got the supplies themselves, they'd been told to seize them by their uh, admiral. Got his name now, but he was in Japan. He wasn't there, so he just said, "Yeah, we're not supplying you anymore. We've got things going on. It's not good anymore. Use Allied supplies." Which, up until 1943, late 1943, 44, early 44, uh, the Japanese had been quite successful in doing, taking our supplies and using them to themselves. But because we would intercepted the message, it made sure that we didn't leave anything, anything behind. We was either destroyed or taken about with us. So it slowed us up a little bit, but it also slowed them a great deal because they couldn't, they couldn't continue. Yeah, but that wasn't that wasn't all ammunition, though. They they've got to have food. No, and, they're saying it's all yeah. ammunition and fuel and food because they'd yeah. been told to travel light. That basically each Japanese man, um, enlisted man, if you like, was only allowed to take uh, three days rations. They had to live off the land. Basically, all they took was salt, rice, and water. And a few vegetables and spices. Everything else they had to get off the land, which at first was fine, because uh, they could get off the uh, villages or where they passed through or the land. But as they gradually got closer, closer, there was no one to get it from, and they hadn't got any. They couldn't get any from dumps because we destroyed all those, and. Uh, they were looking in the centre, we supplying our troops by air, and it's estimated that a third of all the parachutes that landed, the Japanese had. But unfortunately for them, although some of the ammunition worked, um, like the mortar bombs fitted their tubes, the rifle ammunition and that didn't fit their guns, and they only, I think, they hardly got any any food at all in those uh, the, the third of the parachutes they managed to seize. There were mostly things like spares, medical supplies, ammunition they couldn't use, and things like that. <laughs> and I think it was three inch mortars. They managed to use three inch mortars that were dropped that they managed to seize, and that's about it. So again, we're incredibly lucky. And they were, in a sense, incredibly unlucky for having the wrong size ammunition. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's uh, war. Forget, yeah, forget about the ammunition, though. I mean, if if um, if if they if they'd have planned it right 
and got supplies coming up behind, they'd have been okay. Um, well, that was, but as that, I said, that was there's, said there's, about. There's, yeah, but this did happen with a lot of battles. If you look at the even the Second World War, that happened a lot. Um, well, yeah, you you get, go you've got to Napoleon. supply your troops, otherwise they they ain't got no food. Mm. Go back to Napoleon. Go back to, to even yeah. further. Yeah, and, and England was the first country yeah. to introduce, if you like, a, a catering corps and an army that lives on its stomach, marches on its stomach. And always made sure that it was catering somewhere feeding the people. Um, yeah. And it was actually mentioned in Japanese plans that we ought to, they ought to do forward planning and do um, forward bases, supply drops, forward supply bases, which they did in the Philippines, I think. And I think they did in Hong Kong. But the, the, the overall opinion was, well, we didn't need to do it. We wasted time doing those because we could just seize off the people. So why waste money and transport and everything else if you can seize it? And so that became their motto. Don't, don't get held yeah, up yeah, by yeah, the, the petty you stuff. Know, I, I, you know, I don't... I, I, Sandican for me was really black. But I had... I read about Richard the Lionheart. And he yeah. was on a crusade, and he took two and a half thousand prisoners, near enough the same as Sandican, because that was over two and a half thousand, two and a half thousand prisoners, and he had to retreat. So, yeah. so he didn't have the prisoners behind him, and they didn't have enough food for the prisoners. He actually killed, killed a them. lot. Yeah, he killed. Yeah. He actually like killed that. a lot. And and I mean, as we talk about Sandican and we say as, as bad and everything, but I mean, Richard the Third, we Richard Lionheart, we always think that Richard Lionheart was a great crusader. We thought he we wasn't he's really. A, he's he was a, a very no, he was a, he was a very he never, bloodthirsty and brutal man. And he, he never, uh, well, they all were, weren't they, in those days? Yeah, especially I mean, those, those days. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it, it wasn't their duty. To feed the prisoners. Don't forget, there was no Geneva Convention or whatever in those days. It was just not used to feed you. Feed yourself. How can we feed ourselves? You got us prisoners. Or ransom them off. I mean, they used to yeah. ransom them mm. off, didn't they? So well, they, they did. They yeah. did. They 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 so they got the money off their families, so they got their, yeah. their man back. It's, uh, I forgot oh, that he was uh, uh, a prince But of... they were. But Richard, the, we, uh, say, we got, I went on to Richard, which I shouldn't do really, but Richard the Lionheart, um, well, just, um, it's, it's he never hardly time. spent any time in Britain at all. We so we always think of him as a, as a crusader, but... Well, don't forget anyway, that France at that time was part of England. Part of France. The other countries of France Normandy. were English. Normandy, yeah. But think of what's his can name I then, Can I get us back on to a little bit more of yes. this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But not yeah. totally yeah. off what you're Black saying. Hands. Because, <laughs> you know, when you're talking about the ancient battles, where it was all hand-to-hand, -hand, you know, mm. um, it, it was. It was horrible. But there was something on Facebook the other day. Matt, you might be able to help me with this. Because it was about Pagoda Hill. Um, which is oh, yeah. you know, relevant, um, and that that um, disintegrated into hand to hand fighting, yes, and that appalls me because our troops would not have been trained to to do hand to hand combat. Um, and and I read that, and it was a really interesting piece on Pagoda Hill and and all about you know along the Impal um, area. Well, um, and I, mean, I thought, Impal well, itself was basically uh, all in the final days. I think six days was nearly all hand to hand because the Japanese had run out of ammunition. That's right, and, and, and that's we were running sort of, low on ammunition. And that really is going back to what you were saying, um, Ronnie, about the old days where they would just literally go onto a big field and hack one another to death. And it was hmm. virtually the same with Pagoda Hill, which must have been quite a pretty place before um, all that took yeah. place. You know, well, when um, I wrote that thing on Kuima, it was it was the same type of thing that was. Hand-to-hand yeah. -hand fighting, and that was bloody. That was really bloody. I mean, that's, yeah. uh, I, uh, that must have been, 
I mean, you had to have a heart for it in the olden days, and I suppose you did in, in Kuima. But that, Kuima was the first battle we actually won, which is a good thing. Yeah. We turned the tide, and Chinda, he used he used the Japanese's tech uh, uh, technical stuff in going behind our troops to get us to withdraw. And he used it on the Japanese going right the back through. Yeah. But Dad, Dad said he, he, he was at a station in Thailand and the Japanese, when the line was finished, they were taking them back from Burma. Um, and he said they were they were just dying on the train. He said that nobody was looking after them. The Japanese, this is Japanese prisoners, so the Japanese troops. He yeah. said the Japanese just weren't looking after them at all. They were just dying on the train. I did read one the other day about an officer and he did the same thing. Uh, the officers were, uh, what, saw a train come in. Of course, Dad said that happened to him. Some of his mates got together and they went and fed the Japanese on the train, which you think now is a funny thing to do, but it's human kindness. Yeah. <laughs> And, and th th some of the officers said they did it. They they uh, got together and then <coughs> went, took stuff out of their cook uh, cook house and gave to the yep. Japanese on the train. That was uh, it's well it was, it's well noted that bomb because um, the Japanese were treating and they, they're in such a bad state they were dying, dying on the trains and they stopped and. They were refused permission by their own officers to get water or anything, and it was the prisoners of war who gave them their rations, mm. their water, their rice. But you see, mm. everybody, I didn't understand this until I worked with the Japanese, and there's a there's a hierarchy, which is basically a lot of the Japanese soldiers or enlisted men were Korean. They were. Um, Lower caste, uh, and basically, as far as the Japanese hierarchy goes, they were well, you know, you've lost a bit on feet, you've got to retreat, we're not feeding you, we're not taking care of you. I mean, first aid and food and that were not high priorities of the Japanese. If they won, yeah, ransack, have a feast, do what you like. But if you lost, big shame on the Emperor, so if we're not. We're not mm. going to feed you or look after you. Um, there's lot. Right. Uh, should I get on to this? So, and and I put this there's together. There's a lot of that you can find in uh, looking at some of the, the Japanese. Yeah. Should, should, I'll get on to this because um, I was looking for something for March, and. Um, on the Far Eastern Heroes, you know, I've got, I put all my stories on there. There's one by John Macmillan. And it's, it's, it's quite interesting, really, because we don't touch, I, you know, we ain't got Kevin today, we, we don't touch much on, on um, Sumatra. Uh, I thought he was going to be here because that this really is his, his, his bit. Again. But, um, he said he was going to be. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think he might have got in touch with me during the week and said he couldn't make it. A few of them did, but anyway, um, 13th of uh, February, um, 42. Uh, this is his diary, which is, qu is quite good. That's a bit long, so I'll go through it, but it gives you some idea of Singapore and then going on to Sumatra. Uh, now this is February 13th. Shelling, I've, I've got to include this because it gives you the run up to it. Uh, shelling no intents, left Singapore 8 p.m. in ML, which is Muta launch, 432, with fifth, with five Royal Navy and 55 Army personnel aboard. Uh, considered they rammed, they, he said they, they did go into another ship, but that was okay, they survived that. Attacked, uh, this was the 14th, attacked in company with Grasshopper, who we often talk about, 
Grasshopper River Gunboot 625T and Dragonfly River Gunboot 6225T by at least 150 aircraft. Both sunk, we ran ashore for safety on an island, Singkep Island, put 60 sh soldiers uh, ashore and wait until dark. The 15th Singapore fell uh, today at 7 a.m. still on island and slept in open jungle with snakes and ants crawling around us. Motor launchers blades damaged and still unable to flute her. Feed on coconuts and juice with bananas and hard biscuits. All water bottle all water boiled before drinking, slept open in again in open aircraft all day, bathing all day on Sandy Beach. The sixteenth floated her at high tide, expect to proceed tonight, unable to contact soldiers in jungle. Queer tides around this coast. Enormous ebb, ebb at night. Seventeenth uh, left island tonight <coughs> at seven for Banker Island, we intend to hide by day. Heavy sea running as she rolled a bit. <coughs> Wednesday the 18th, captured at dawn by Jap cruiser <coughs> and taken to Banker. Japs looted ship, all ships which left Singapore on the 13th, I fear captured. <coughs> and he wasn't far wrong because most of them were sunk, so all the big ships were, so that isn't he isn't far wrong. Now this gets on to March, so that gives you an idea of where he was going. Now Sunday the 1st, <coughs> leaving tonight for other camp at Palembang in, in Sumatra. Sail during the night, spent miserable night on board in rain. Sail next morning at dawn across straits and then 56 miles up river through swamps and dense jungle banks to Palembang. Crocodiles in River. Now he, this is the 1st of March, so he is now a, a POW in Sumatra. So that is, that really, that knocked me back because I thought, well, that's a bit, because I always thought Java, Sumatra, they, they fell after the 8th of March, but that gets you there. Anyway, um, billeted in school, Mulu school, Food better, ships scuttled in harbour, and most of all the tank was burnt. Quite a big town, now alas in ruins with plenty of food, we hope. Japs treating us better here, pork and milk now, but no tears yet. He's expecting a lot, isn't he? Working, getting place tidy and in order, staying wherever it, uh, where Raf must have been. Wednesday the 4th, still surviving and now prepared for at least two years imprisonment. How long, how I long to get back again to Tibet. No news of outside world and no books, but have an accordion. The fifth outbreak of dysentery uh, due to bad, bad water and poor feeding. Climate very warm owing to being inland, thunder and rain. The sixth questioned by intelligence officers today, but divulged nothing. Colonel taken away for refusing to speak with hands tied, issued with soup today and nut before time. The seventh, dreamt of home, dreamt of home during the night and what a rude awakening them to see our surroundings in the morning. Diet now, breakfast biscuits, dinner, rice, tea, more rice. Java surrendered, this is the eighth. Now in possession of fine board, a beard, must shave it off as unhealthy in this climate. The life of a prisoner of war is monotonous, I can't sell it, and boring, but still must stick to it. Prepared at least, this is the memo, memo he's put in. Prepared for at least two years prisoner, prisoner routine. People at home are informed we're missing. The seventh medical treatment, now much better, but still a, long, a lot to be desired. 
now allowed to play netball in space outside. <laughs> Issued with a pa packet of cigarettes for a birthday present. So we now know 9th was his birthday. Oh no, the, the 10th is his birthday because it says so. Great celebrations here on the occasion of the fall of Java. Bands and people waving Jap flags parade at town all day and given special cheer when outside our camp. A treacherous crowd. The Wednesday 11th, very warm now with sun overhead at midday. It must be slightly south of the equator, which Palembang was, as two degrees so. Another 140 arrived from Banker today in thunderstorm, so my other pal should be with this crowd. Dutch left today for our other camp. <laughs> and this, this bit. Rice, rice, rice. If I ever survive on it, the age of miracles is not yet past. One meal does not suffice till the next one. In addition, the stone floor or bed seems to be harder every night. Never again will I grumble at home. So that, that he's actually got a lot of information in here. I mean, I, I didn't realize that Sumatra had POWs late February. And he gives you an idea of where, how they slept. Uh, the 14th played netball all day, a good game, exercise does us good. The 15th had church service today, so greatly enjoyed the present. A Jap general at the Imperial Staff visited, visited us, us today. We hope we get more food. And that I am unable, I'm now able to count my ribs and almost every bone in my body juts out. It's only a month he's been prisoner and he was in that state after a month. We managed to get a little news from RC, that's from Catholic priests, from lads who have been in hospital. So the Royal Catholic, the priests could travel so they could take news to the prisoners. So again, that, that rings through. Started class in Malay to keep brain active, played basketball in the afternoon. 17th officers, including Commodore Reed, Captain Philip Reed in brackets, Colonel Hill, in all over 50 officers detailed for work party tomorrow with 200, about 100 miles north road repairs. I'll finish the rest when somebody else has a go, because there is, that's mm -hmm. quite long, but there's quite a nice lot of info in there. Mm -hmm. um, you, can, you can read it if you want to, as, as that is actually on Far Eastern Heroes, mm -hmm. um, and it's John, John Macmillan. Now, I must have put who, who was, a little while ago because I couldn't remember. Who, who was he, Ronnie? Who was who he? Who was he? Yeah, I mean, was he a, in the Royal Norfolk or what? I, or was I he a civilian? Or? I haven't got the bit here, but if you read it, you'll find... No, he was Navy. He was definitely oh, right. Navy because I can remember reading the first <clears> bit. <throat> he was Navy. Um, mm. But the nice thing about it is they, that does coincide with the two ships we often talk about, which is the Grasshopper and the Dragonfly, because mm. we often mention them too. Because uh, was it the Grasshopper had the dog on board? Yeah, Judy. Judy. Yeah, yeah had Judy on board. So. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, Sophie, you haven't got your mic on. Have now. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, I don't really have anything, no. not really, um, no, I'm just sorry to say. How's um, Liam? Oh, it's all right, it's, he's just found out that um, school will finish on Friday, yeah. much to his delight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Who was it? Yeah, he took him to see uh, <laughs> Much to my <laughs> not delight. <laughs> so, Who did you yeah. um, see last week? Oh, we took, oh, we took him to Thomas Land. We took him to Thomas Land, and he uh, um, 
Oh, the fat controller. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting old. Yeah. What's the Thomas the Tank Engine? Um, you know like Thomas the Tank Engine? Is it Drayton Man of Oh, right. so, oh yeah, sorry. Right. Um, right. we went Thomas. With some, we went some, with some friends of ours, um, and um, Gareth, my my friend, and his, his wife Claire and their little boy, and um, Gareth is, is apparently a bit of an adrenaline junkie. So he sp spotted some of these bigger roller coasters outside <clears throat> the confines of the relatively safe Thomas land in the main park and said, oh, let's go on that. And Liam said, oh, I want to go on that to my husband. who looked like he was going to be sick. And, <laughs> and so Gareth and Liam went on the roller coaster. And I, I've got a video of it. And I was just like, oh, I, I feel sick just looking at it, you know. Um, and they got in the in the back car, which went up highest because it went up backwards That's and then back down well. again. Oh, yeah. yeah, and then and then uh, they came off, and Liam was like, "Whoa!" He said. And then Gareth said, "Shall we go again?" And Liam went, "Yeah." <laughs> and then they went, and I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> and then they spotted another one, and said, "Shall we go on that?" And I was like, oh. "And I said, Gareth, we're going to have to bring you on any on any theme park trip because." Um, Mike and I are too scared to go on them. So, <laughs> I wouldn't go on it. So, um, yeah, we did. Um, Gareth's wife, Claire, and I were, girl, were spectators. My girl used, to, <laughs> so, used to really try and make me go on them. And now I had to at the time because she didn't have my younger daughter. But, when, of course, when her, the next daughter came along, Rosie, they used to they used to go on them together. But I used to hate them. I used to hate going on them. But luckily, my boy didn't like them. <laughs> so when he got older, yeah, I, I just... didn't have to go on with him. Oh. I, well, I just spectated from the sideline. <laughs> so, the girls are... Um, yeah. and, and, yeah. and many and years ago... You say, come on, Dad, uh, come on with me. And you look at it and you think, oh, no. <laughs> and they're flipping upside down. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah. but no, that's, uh, that's to have children, that is. Mm -hmm. So many years ago, yeah, so I'm, uh... I had a girlfriend who uh, took me to uh, Olsen Towers, <laughs> and uh, I went on to a few rides. rides. We went it's on one, long. and it, it's swinging right, and we have a shoulder, you have this, this shoulder strap to come down and click, click down. And doing a little of this, this ride started separating. And then we see, you know, this, this, you it's spun upside down. Right down. Well, the first time I spun upside right down, my shoulder thing, which hadn't obviously locked, came off. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just hanging on <laughs> death at about 40 with all the air going, bloody hell. <laughs> Oh God! It was, yeah. uh, horrible. I, I, I didn't like them. One of the worst ones we went on was all dark. That was completely <laughs> dark, and that come down, and you're going around, and you don't know where you are. Anyway, I'll get back to this then. Uh, Thursday the nineteenth. Yeah. This is March. Okay. Right. Thursday the nineteenth. All Singapore, all our Singapore do dollars are now useless. Uh, it was, um, we go on this working party. We are trying to get some credit system in operation with the Jap government. This is the 19th of March. So they can't use any money. So they're trying to get a loan from the Japanese government. Um, we can't survive on rice. Met a Glasgow fellow, McGee. We arrived, who, when he arrived here today, best of pals, very decent fellow. Other t 10 soldiers arrived. Um, they were treacherously given up by Malays. So they escaped Singapore, but were given up by the Malays. The mosquito menace became worse. Sorry for those who catch malaria. It can't, uh, you can't, it won't be on rice. They will fight against it. Had issued issue of tobacco reported darwin has been captured and rangoon take re rangoon retaken which is 
Anyway, uh, camping at Kapa Ka Kampong, about 50 miles from Palembang. Uh, delightful journey up country. That, this bit is good. Delightful, <laughs> delightful journey up country through rubber plantations, jungle, and paddy fields along a twisting highway, sleeping under canvas. Scenery, great. They, they they did enjoy some things. I mean, that weren't all doom and gloom like they tend to be pushed on us. The complete absence of news of war keeps us guessing and paves the way for the wildest rumours. Natives robbed by the Japs live entirely on the country. Malays starving, no food, no money. Work. This is 23rd. Working during morning in jungle, building rude. Never did I dream I'd be a navvy in, in, on the equator. Mosquitoes abound in their thousands here and very warm. Tuesday is 24th. Shifter today further north by 50 mile. Cross two rivers, work hard in the heat. Dutch blown up pipeline every hundred yards along the road. So they're bathing in muddy river at night. So that before the Dutch did give up, they actually did get rid of the water. So the, the, they didn't have the water system. Uh, 25th, still at ferry today, did not work. Great day, bathing in river. Receiving bananas and pineapples from Japs. What a change. Rules in a bad state here and we don't know it. And don't we know it. Working today in boiling heat caught in thunderstorm and soaking through, marched about 10 miles back to camp in mud six inch deep. The 27th of March, at river making pontoons, uh, now feeling the strain of working on rice alone, it can't be done. Large number of sick in camp, water always has to be boiled before drinking, heat terrible. The 28th, repairing road through dense jungle, Snakes, scorpions, etc. Not uncommon sight for us. Japs in, in bad form today, so we, set, we expect something amiss. Killed tw 12 scorpions outside tent. Sunday the 29th, no day of rest, working all day in the blazing heat. Two men escaped during the night, heading in a northerly direction. I fear they won't get far before being captured. Country round here, mainly jungle and, and mangrove swamp. Memo. Japs make us work six till ten and then two to four. Work not hard, but heat uh, scarcely bearable. I'm getting to the end of it, so we're nearly there. The, the 30th of, uh, of March. Now, you, you heard him say on the 29th that two men escaped. Monday the 30th, left ferry at dawn for camp number one. Two men as yet not discovered as missing. On arrival, there was a, grand, a great panic. Search party left during the night, but their efforts were in, in vain. Hope the two lads managed to get through. Tuesday the 31st, stuck at camp at dawn and proceeded during daytime to Palabang. Arrived about six at night in time for supper. Collected 20 bananas, 20 packets of tea and some coffee. So well off for a wee while. That's the end of it. But that was quite good because he gives a lot of information. Which, um, silly little things, but they, they, you do get an idea <clears throat> of what he was doing. And what was happening to him. Yeah. That's, the that's, that's, that's quite, uh, quite a good one, that. Mm. And that goes on till February, or I think it goes on till March 43. So that might be worth you having a read of it on the, on the site. That's on Far Eastern Heroes under John Macmillan. Um, so it's quite a, quite a nice read because you get a good idea what he's doing and what's happening to him. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I've done a lot of talking. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> No, but um, Let's stop you typing. Can I, can yeah, I ask, something. where was yeah. it that the pig basket massacre was? Is that that same region? Um, you know, the pig basket mass massacre. 
that happened where um, Elizabeth Van Kampen, I think, was she in Palembang at that time? Um, yeah, and she was imprisoned in the school. And she saw the, um, uh, yes. the prisoners being taken past yeah. in these baskets. And um, I mean, that I don't think she realised. Was that, was that, that, that the same area, the pig basket massacre? Because that is horrendous as well, isn't that's, it? That's uh, yeah. near Sutherland. Yeah, that, but the, the Japs, the Japs also buried their dead in the baskets as well, didn't they? Because yeah. that happened in that that happened in um, Bal um, Balayli. Um The Chinese said they'd seen baskets being taken out to sea to dump in the sea. So we take it that we don't know, but we take it they were the dead. Uh, yeah, but the, these up. were British troops or yeah. Australian troops yeah. that they took uh, through and then they um, took them out so far into the sea and then just threw yeah. them overboard. Um, yeah, that yeah. is in, um, that is in, um, oh, what's his name? Liverpool. Oh, the war trials. Trials. Uh, Knights of Bushido. Um, yeah, oh, right. Knights of yeah. Bushido. Lord, Lord. That is in there. That yeah. is in there. Um, if you if you want a read and and go to bed have a nightmares, read the Knights of Bushido. I've got it yeah. I've got. I've, I've never managed to read it. It's I've just... never. I've never read it. I I've, I started no. reading it, yeah. and I get so far, and then I miss out bits because it's yeah. so. What we think he did is because that was written just after the the war tribe squad trials, and we think he did copy the war tribe trials. So he actually copied bits yeah, he did. from, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what happened because they're so graphic. It's got to be you. You can't get all that information by yourself. You've got to copy it, no. and uh, I think that's what he did. That's really, really horrendous, though. But um, but I, I think uh, people have appreciated the rules have been pushed up on the people um, family because we do need rules because um, like Liam we're trying to encourage the youngsters to be involved and as I said on 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 the people family ask yourself. Would you want your child to read what you've just put on? Um, which yeah, exactly. Um, we, we can all we can all read between the lines. You don't want every bit explained to you. You you know what happens, and you know you don't you don't want the graphical description. I don't want it. I certainly don't want it. I. I get, you know, that, I mean, um, there's a fine, there's a fine line, line in, uh, in, in, how do you put it, in protecting people for reading really stuff that is unpleasant, and also, also the end of uh, hiding, hiding, the, hiding the truth, which is difficult to uh, so You don't, you don't have to... to yeah, but you don't have to say you're hiding the truth. If you say the nurses were, had to walk into the water and machine gunned, and it was believed they were, we're abused, shot, yeah. that's enough. That's enough. Uh, I mean, we all know what happened to them. We all know what happened to them. You don't have to describe everything. I mean, I did put on there, oh, a couple of months ago, um, a couple of months ago, about yeah, uh, you don't have to go into the rapes and no, uh, about oh yeah, the hospital in in Hong Kong, and oh, the yeah. statement the statement actually goes through the whole graphical thing what happened to yeah. the nurses, and you don't want that. I, I if if my if my daughter or my wife was killed, I just want to know. She was killed. I wouldn't want to know all the graphic details. Uh, I, I, I don't think that's, don't think that's appropriate, really. Well, I think um, it needs to be recorded somewhere, though. Yeah, but really? not, not on, not on the things so the children can read it. 
No, no, I don't mean on Facebook. No. I mean, you know, no. it yeah, needs to be recorded. Yeah. As, as we say, the, I mean, the notes of Bushido, if you want to read it, try and read it. Mm. Have you tried to read it, Tim? I've, I've, I've read, read the section. I've read the section that concerned my dad on the Singapore Maru. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, but I, I didn't read the rest. And unfortunately, I've now lost the book. Because I, I actually really wasn't all that interested in anything else at that time. And that, yeah. that was quite a few years ago. I can, I you can send about, you the book. You, 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 were, you were in communication with James, weren't you? James's son. Was it you? Who? James's son. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because he was. I, I must. Get, I must get hold of him again, actually, because um, the he's last time he was trying, he was he was trying to get the diary renovated because he said it was so in such a bad condition. Yeah. He didn't want. He didn't want to open it up because he thought it would just fall apart on him. So he took. I told him to take it to the um, RA museum, and I think because he lives quite close to them, and I yeah. think that's where he's taken it. But he said they. They had actually got it in a humidifier or something, not a dehumidifier, a humidifier, yeah. trying to put the moisture back into the paper. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, no. uh, yeah, he's ever so good because, I mean, he let me have his dad's di diary to put on the Paris News. That was about, what, 15 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, but he's he's got the full diary. Yeah, the full not diary. Just, cause you you, you only got an extract, but... Yeah. Because he must be able to get at some of it. He must have been able to yeah. get some of it because he he um, gave me a couple of pages where my dad was mentioned, you know, as being in a yeah. group that was being transferred elsewhere and things like that. So, yeah. But no, that's um, no, yeah, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. Yeah, my yeah, he's he's ever so good. He's ever so helpful. But um, mm. yeah, my dad, my dad's diary. Um, I got most of my information from that, which he gave me to read, actually. He actually gave it to me to read, so I knew what had uh, happened. He wouldn't tell me, he just gave me his diary to read. So I read it in <clears> the 60s, and Gillian actually typed it out for me, and I gave a copy to my two sisters as well. But she could only write out what she could read, and because he wrote it in pencil, a lot of the pages were faded, even in the 60s. <clears throat> Um, and I thought, well, I'll have a go at that. So when he came to live with us, I said, I've had a look, Dad, and I can't find your diary. He said, no, I've thrown it out. Oh, thrown it out. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But I, I suppose he, that was past and he didn't want, he didn't want it about, so he threw it out. Uh, anyway, um, I've gone on for long enough. Uh, Tim? We've had a good day. Anything, anything I'll, I'll ask you, to, you, you, you saw that map I put on the Facebook page about the, um, yeah. Yeah. the repatriation. Yeah. Have you any idea what that lot was? That, well, it may only be one person for all I knew. They went out, you know, they went, looked as they went to Khartoum and then up to Haifa and then over to Tripoli and then back to UK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some, some of the boats. Yeah, had a journey, that was. Yeah. But some I, know, of the boots, I don't know whether that was. Some of the boats did well, he, he travel could, he, quite a way, didn't they? Uh, they did. But he could have flown. Through. I mean, some of some of this must yeah. have been flying or train, yeah. but I couldn't work yeah. out why anyone would actually go that way. Well, since, since, since uh, depending on the, on the time, they were taken over it, and put in the hospital, the hospital, and then, and it's, then possible it's possible they were, they were, if they wanted, wanted they would be sent to the evening. And uh, I've no idea what's going on. Hmm. Um, I, yeah. I tried to get I mean, Bernard so... on tonight. I, I tried to get Bernard on. Um, he's not he's not feeling very well. His his diabetes is really playing up, and uh, mm. and uh, he uh, he's feeling hard at the moment. Poor Bernard. If you've got oh, yeah. Bernard's uh, email, just send a note to him because he's really depressed at the moment. You know, he, he, I was trying to get him on tonight so he could come and have a chat and just get away from his house for a little while. But so, um, oh, if you've got Bernard, uh, yeah, he's on. He's um, on. Um, you can get him on Messenger. 
I'll do that. Well, I've got it somewhere. I'm gonna, uh, if you can, can private message me, Ronnie. Me. Good. I'll, uh... Yeah, if you just have a look on Messenger, it's Bernard Stogden. Um, yeah, it, right. it, have a look on the Feeble family. You can get, you can get his uh, his. Uh, I've got his details somewhere. I've got everybody's message. Well, he's cha he's changed his uh, email address address twice, so I tend to get him on Messenger. And what I do is I go on Messenger and actually video him, so we can talk face to face. So he can see I'm here and everything. And uh, that would be nice if. We, he is, he's 80, 84 now, I think. <laughs> he's 84. He wants some company. So if you can, if anyone can give him a, a bell I will do. and have a chat with him. I'm going to say good night to you all. Yeah, so, so am um, I. So yeah, let me just turn off the cord. Yeah, stay safe. Oh,